But first, you might know retailer Zappos for the shoes it sells and its emphasis on customer service. What you may not know about is its quirky corporate culture and why the company is banking on that for its long-term success. Our economics correspondent Paul Salman reports as part of his weekly series, Making Sense, which airs every Thursday. Definitely the best porta potty experience I've ever had. From its porta party PR to its campus in downtown Vegas, Zappos, the online shoemonger, is devoted to different. Let me give you these three rules about wearing wallflowers, as we like to call them. Wallflowers? Wallflowers. As you see, we got the wall, and we call them wallflowers. Front desk dress code enforcer Jason Brown gives visitors three options. First one is to take it off if it holds sentimental value to you. The next one is to wear it around your head in a bandana, John Rambo style. And then the last one is to cut it and it becomes part of the collection. Thankfully, my tie was deemed passably peculiar and thus spared a spot on the wall. Amidst decor both seasonal, lanterns for Chinese New Year, and long standing, like the shoes of foam. Tony Shea took over Zappos 17 years ago after selling his online ad network, Link Exchange, to Microsoft for a cool $265 million. What a lot of people actually don't know is the real reason why we ended up selling the company. And that is? Because the company culture just ended up going completely downhill. I myself dreaded getting out of bed in the morning to go to my own company. History would not repeat itself, Shea vowed. So at Zappos, culture comes first. And that starts with hiring people who will fit. I remember coming in and one of the things was, we're not trying to hire based off of your education. We want to hire based off of someone when I, I would want to go have a beer with after lunch. Well, I would want to have a beer with you and I barely know you. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a beer, we could have a shot. <laughs> Zappos core values are an obsession. Embrace change, be humble, create fun and a little weirdness. It's a family that loves to play. Musician Tyler Williams heard it was harder to get into Zappos than Harvard. So to be more than a face in the crowd, he sent a video valentine. And when it earned him an interview. I think one of the craziest questions is they ask on a scale of one to 10, how weird are you? So I'm definitely a 10 on that scale. So I was worried I was a little too weird for Zappos. Nope. Williams is now a fungineer, the brains behind company galas and other so-called experiences, like Tutu Tuesdays. We, probably at the pinnacle of its popularity, we had 50, 60 people that would wear uh, tutus on Tuesday. Another core value, build a positive team and family cool. spirit. So we put these games on the elevator to ah. hopefully, that was good, Thank you. to hopefully get people to stop and play the game, uh, have collisions, have conversations, and get off on the wrong floor so people would visit different areas that they normally wouldn't. Zappos invests lavishly in morale. Impress a colleague, and HR will pay you zollars to redeem for Zappos swag. Each month, employees can reward a coworker with a $50 company bonus for going above and beyond. And company largesse begets acts of random kindness. I took a picture of a particular bouquet that I liked, and I posted on Facebook, like, oh, I love flowers. Letha Miles started in customer service nine years ago. The next day, there was a bouquet of flowers sitting on my desk along with a note saying, you make us smile, so we thought we would make you smile. Birthday balloons abound. Cubicle self-expression is de rigueur. But look, what can the business rationale be for all this? Why would Amazon pay more than a billion dollars for Zappos in 2009 and then let it spend so generously for so long just to make its employees happy? I think it's pretty hard to give great, amazing service if you're an unhappy employee. Turns out Zappos' business is service. It started with shoes, as Amazon did with books, aims to branch out. We've talked about one day there could be a Zappos Airlines or a Zappos Hotel that's just about the very best customer service and customer experience. Well-known service like the 365-day free shipping return policy 
managed by customer service reps who start at $14 an hour and comprise a third of all employees. Thank you for calling Zappos. This is Sandy. How may I help you? And above and beyond service. Two flight attendants told me Zappos, when asked, sent pizza to an auditorium full of new JetBlue hires. In fact, we just had our longest phone call ever, which was well over 10 hours long. 10 hours? Yeah. And they what, what, what were really they talking bonded. about? I was not there, <laughs> but uh, I think they, they bonded. So for you, to hear that somebody spent 10 hours on the phone with a customer bonding, that's a good thing, not a waste of time. That's an amazing thing. But what's the payoff? 2008 was the first year we hit a billion dollars in gross merchandise sales. We're doing several times that now. And the number one driver through all that history has been through repeat customers and word of mouth. So Amazon has kept hands off while Zappos proselytizes its happy, weird ways, offering daily tours and advising companies that want to emulate it. Now, CEO Shea can be impish. Rachel, do you want me to leave? Get it? Leave? <laughs> but he can also be seriously controversial. He's introduced a system called holacracy that, among other things, does away with bosses entirely. All Zappos' 1,500 employees now belong to some 500 self-governing teams called circles. We're going to start like we do every holacracy meeting with a check-in round. Just call out your distractions, get here, get ready to process some tensions today and, and share what you know with others. I'm only distracted because I have a super long day of meetings. I'm super, super distracted because um, the application window is open for intern candidates again for the summer, which means that we have thousands and thousands of applicants in the span of a week up to like 5,000. So-called tactical meetings are run by a facilitator according to a rigid format using holocratic lingo. Let's move on to triage, you guys. You could just go ahead and yell those tensions out, and Rachel, as our secretary, will go ahead and capture those for you. In the closing round, kudos for efficiency. A ton of actions. We covered seven items in less than a half an hour, and we have like a zillion outputs, which is really great. Um, but with that, everyone have a great day. Chris Peak helped with the holacracy rollout. I would say the best thing about this process is the commitment to action and projects and the transparency to those. I would say probably the most challenging with Zappos's culture, you're, you introduced a really rigid process within meeting spaces. Shea believes self-management is key to Zappos' longevity, allowing it to grow not like a top-down corporation, but a city. Most companies, as they get bigger, they become less nimble, less innovative, less productive. Every time the size of a city doubles, innovation or productivity per resident increases by 15%. When you get more people in a relatively smaller area in a city, then you get this crossover of ideas from different creative types and entrepreneurs and businesses. But self-organization wasn't for everyone. So two years ago, Shea offered a liberal severance package to those not sold on the new structure. In fact, to everyone. 18% took buyouts, hiking the firm's yearly turnover rate for 2015 to almost 30% though there's plenty of turnover at customer service firms and plenty in Las Vegas, period. But Letha Miles is sticking with it. The people who stayed are pretty much saying that they're willing to commit to uh, learning it and practicing it. You know, let's still remember we're friends, we're family, and I think that helps us stay true to the process. It felt like it took the humanity out of it, but we've worked that back into the process, I feel, and everybody's voice gets heard, which usually in the past, it was just the loudest person in the room, right? Williams points out that Zappos is now canine friendly because it was deemed safe enough to try, a key idea in holacracy. In the past, that had been shut down multiple times, and through holacracy, we were able to push that through. I know that's not a huge deal, but it's a big deal to our employees. But Shea thinks self-management will accomplish something much bigger, saving Zappos from the fate of most large companies. If you look at the Fortune 500 list, which I think came out in 1955 originally, something like 85 percent, maybe more, are no longer on that list. The default fate for most companies is actually death. I want this company to still be around 500 years from now. This is economics correspondent Paul Salmon, still wearing my tie, reporting from Las Vegas.